No. I saw you taking pictures of me. I'm a street photographer. I take pictures of everyone. I've seen you before. I've seen you three times in the last couple of weeks. Well, I don't know. I'm in the city often, but maybe you just saw someone who looks like me. Let me see those photos. I'll show you the one of you. If oh my god, how many have you taken? Delete those right now. Just a few. A few? You were an interesting... This is a public space. It's my legal right to take photos. I want you to delete those right now. I'll call the police. January 19th, 2015, 8.45am. I have been discovered. This will be my last attempt. Subject is more reactionary than expected and does not take well to being photographed. Gwen, I think that shelf's had enough organising for now. You've barely spoken to a customer all day. Sorry. No need for apologies, just keep an eye out. That customer's been hovering around the horror section for ages. Why don't you go give him a hand? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Don't get distracted, Gwen. Hi, yeah, um, well, I'm, I'm after a, a really dark, creepy, scary horror movie. I'm trying to show my partner something to really freak with his head, but he's not scared by anything. Has he seen a lot of horror films? Yeah, yeah, he's actually a bit of a, a horror movie aficionado, more than me anyway. So, he's familiar with the classics, The Shining, The Thing. Yeah, yeah, I, I think he's seen those, yeah. Well, there are a few others you could try. Possession's a very good one. It doesn't seem to be too well known here. Um, it's by Andrzej Zawalski. He's a Polish director. He's very good. One of his films was actually banned in Poland. Oh, well, that gives me a good idea about how scary he is. That one wasn't that good. Oh? Possession's good, though. It's very graphic, but also melodramatic and out there. Hmm. I thought it worked. These are very interesting film, psychologically. There's a few others. Oh, no, that, that, that one's great. Thanks. Uh, thank you. Uh, you've seen a lot of movies, obviously. I work in a video store. Don't you think I should know a lot of movies? <laughs> well, yeah, sure. Definitely. Um, so, yeah, great. Thanks. The, you've, you've helped a lot. Thank you. Cheers. I'll, um, I'll catch you later.
Oh, hey. What's your name? Gwen. This is going to sound a bit forward, but I find you very attractive, and I was wondering if you wanted to come back to my place. Um, <laughs> uh, I'm you supposed to get to know me a little better before you ask something like that? I understand it's abrupt. I just prefer to keep things simple. I understand if you don't want to, but here's my phone number in case you change your mind. I live just down the road. Hello. Yeah, no, that's fine. I'm definitely still interested. I'm at my place if you wouldn't mind coming here. Okay, see you soon. Hey, good morning. Hey. That was nice last night. Does that usually work? Asking guys straight up like that? Sometimes. Not always. Hmm. Is that it though? Was it just the one night you wanted? Yeah. That's too bad. Well, okay. One night. I get it, but how about some conversation? Tell me a little bit about yourself. There's not much to say. I can't believe that. Everyone has something to say about themselves. Are you a nymphomaniac or something? That just has sex with no emotion attached? I'm not judging, I'm just curious. No. And why so distant? Just not really looking to get involved with anyone. I just had a bad day yesterday. I guess you want me to clear out then? If you wouldn't mind. Okay, no problem. Well, it was nice sleeping with you and kind of meeting you, <laughs> Gwen. Subject first sighted on a train heading north on the Butler line from Perth Station. About 175 centimetres tall, brown medium curly hair with a goatee and brown eyes. He was wearing a red and white tartan button shirt and tan trousers. What caught my eye was that he didn't seem to have anything in his pockets. They were completely flat, besides the outline of a card. He seemed to be looking around at other passengers and looked slightly restless.
Hey, weird girl. Where do you go all the time with those heavy bags, hey?
dollars. Same table as usual? Yeah. yeah. How's everything going? Oh yeah, pretty good. Uh, she's jamming today? Nah, she's on holiday down some place near Mandra. Yeah, it's cool. Uh, Pinchero? That's it, yes, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, it's a good place. I've been down there a few times actually. Um, got an old friend that lives there now. It doesn't matter, I guess, so I was just hoping to talk to her about that painting she wanted. Okay, I can pass on a message if you like. Yeah, actually, that would be great. I've got uh, some designs here I think she'll like. Um, just pass those on to her and uh, yeah, tell sure, her to give yeah. me a call. Yeah. Here's your muffin. Coffee won't be a minute. Thank you very much, sir. Papers are one dollar each. Sorry. Thanks. Anything else I can help you with? No, oh, thanks. Have a nice day. Excuse me. Um, could you help me? I'm, I'm looking for a movie. It's, uh, it's called Stranger on the Third Floor. No, sorry. We don't have that. Uh, are you sure? I mean, can you check on the computer for me? I know we don't have it. I've looked for it before. Oh, well, that's too bad. Do you have any good noir recommendations? Maybe. Uh, have you tried Touch of Evil? Yes, yes, Orson Welles. That is a good movie. Well, perhaps, um... Have I seen you somewhere before? No, I don't think so. Uh, do you come here often? No, no, the one near me uh, closed down. Very disappointing. I'm sure I've seen you somewhere before. At a coffee shop. About a week ago. That's it, unless I'm mistaken. I don't know. I... I like to try different coffee places. The one on Charles Avenue. You'd remember it. It's got this vintage furniture everywhere. It's a really cool place. I don't remember that. Um, maybe it was someone with a similar face? No, I'm sure it was you. Hair done differently? Well, <laughs> I don't really do my hair up much, so... Anyway, I should really get back to work. Uh, you might want to try The Postman Always Drinks Twice, The Stranger, Double Indemnity. Look, wait. I'm sorry for trying to pin you down back there. I don't know, you've got some sort of interesting look about you. Maybe I've seen you before, maybe I haven't, I don't know. I, I get these kind of things mixed up all the time. But there is something interesting about you all the same. If that doesn't sound too hackneyed. Anyway, I don't want to bother you, but I just always considered it a travesty to waste an opportunity when something just feels like you should do it. So, I guess what I'm trying to say is, would you like to go get a coffee sometime? Maybe next week? How about, how about I leave you my number um, and you can think it over?
you leave a message at the tone, I'll get back to you whenever I feel like it. Hello, this is Gwen. I'd like to have lunch like you asked. Um, call me back when you can. When you start paying for the rent, honey, that's when this place becomes yours as well as mine. Fine. I'll spend mine at Jolly's, alright? You can come over and you dumb bit of fucking bitch. Fuck off! Hey! Glad you decided to come. It's okay. It's a nice day. It's beautiful. I know it's not really a, a fancy place to take someone out, but uh, who needs fancy, really? Unless you normally expect something more on a first date. I've never been on a date before, so I don't really have anything to compare it to. Yeah, right. It's true. Really? I mean, without sounding too shallow, um, you're a pretty girl. I'd be surprised if you hadn't been asked out before. Drunk men and guys on the street have hit on me a few times, but I wasn't really interested. They were usually pretty crude. So why me then? Just the first guy that wasn't drunk? You seemed interesting. Hey, that's my reason. Or maybe that's just my cover-up for being just as shallow as those other guys. I don't think you're shallow. Well, I appreciate that. But how can you be so sure? You don't know me. Neither of us can be sure of anything about the other. We only just met. Very true. I suppose I shouldn't be so sexist. You could be shallow too. So, uh, what do you think you'll get? I think I'll have the carbonara today. Hmm. I think I'll just have a burger. What do you do for a living? Are you a painter? Oh, How the hell did you figure that out? You have paint on your hands. <laughs> so I do. Yeah, I do paintings for commission. Uh, try and sell my other stuff at the markets, but it's not really a way to make a living these days. So I'm studying in the city, aged care, which is it's okay, I guess. Um, it's not that I dislike old people, it's just they can be a pain sometimes, if you know what I mean. Uh, it's not really where my passion lies. Uh, but it's a job that uh, helps people with nowhere else to go, so I can deal with it not being my first choice of work. So, you need a backup career. Why can't you make a living? Basically, market saturation. And the fact is there barely is a market anymore. People don't want to pay for handmade art when they can replicate things so easy. Photos do the job for most people. Everything is there just at a touch of a button. You know, I found it strange when you gave me your phone number. It was a home phone number, not a mobile. Why is that? Yeah, uh, I should probably explain. Uh, a lot of people do get bothered by this, but... Uh, I'm what you might like to call a technophobe, <laughs> or a Luddite, which isn't anything that crazy, but uh, I just don't like the whole modern tech deal. I mean, I, I still listen to CDs and I have a TV, but I don't carry a phone and I don't have a computer. <laughs> it's just, it's all just too much noise to me. I mean, I used to feel that need to know what everyone's up to 24 or 7 and it used to uh, it used to make me go crazy, but one day I just forgot it and uh, never looked back. My friends think it's a bit annoying, but uh, 
People lasted most of human history without having to send 10,000 texts a day or having to check their uh, uh, MySpace constantly. But how do you stay organized? Make appointments and things? Oh, I, uh, it's not hard. I, I write the important stuff down. I make most appointments over the phone and uh, all the other stuff I just keep up here in my noggin. It sort of frees up my mind to think about other more interesting things. And, I feel like I have more privacy. It doesn't bother you, does it? No. But you disagree. I like to stay informed. You're a curious person, I can tell. Your friends don't like the irritated phone. No, I mean, they think it's a bit dumb, but uh, it works for me, and they have their own weird little quirks too. I'm sure your friends do too. Do you have any weird friends? I mean, I don't mean to say that in a bad way. I, I kind of like weird people. I don't. I don't know. I don't really have any. What? No friends? No. But, uh, by choice or just bad luck? I don't know. Just not really good with people. Well, you, you decided to come here today. I don't know. Just trying something new, I suppose. How do you normally spend your time? I don't know. <laughs> you say that a lot. I guess. I just don't really know what to tell you. There's not a lot interesting about me. Okay. Um, you know I'm here because I'm interested in you, but... It seems to me that you don't really want to talk to me, and that's okay, I mean... If you don't, then just say it. I don't want you to be here just as a favour. It's okay, really. I mean, sometimes you, you go out on a limb just based on a, a vibe. It's, it's not always going to work out. So. No! I want to get to know you. Well, yeah, I mean, I want to get to know you too, but the conversation can't just go one way. Well, I guess... I like to study a lot, just anything I find interesting. And I like films. Ah, that's why you work at a video store. Actually, I started really getting interested after I started working there. Just as a way to make sure I knew what to say to customers. I'd watch as many of the films as I could and well, I guess I kind of just got obsessed. You like films too? Yes, I love them. I mean, I've loved them since I was a kid. I've got a whole <laughs> lot at home. But it still doesn't compare to going to a real cinema. No, it doesn't. <laughs> See? This is better, isn't it? I mean, we're really talking. Yeah. I've been listening to a new band lately called The Flaming Lips. Have you heard of them? Heard of them? That's one of my favourite bands from the 90s. I've got all their albums. What's your favourite song of theirs? I don't know. I like a lot of them, really. What other bands do you like? Do you like a lot of alternative rock like that? Well, I do like that kind of music, but I'm really into jazz and, and classical. Like um, Louis Armstrong, Ray Charles, Ella Fitzgerald. Just some of my favourites. God, do I sound enough like a hipster yet? I do have a partial excuse, though. My father, he used to direct an orchestra. No, I like that kind of music, too. Do you ever wonder about people when you see them from afar? All the time. Why? Uh, just those two people over there by the bench. Sometimes I just wonder about their connections, like how they know each other, that sort of thing. She's his mum. He looks bored, so he must be there out of obligation. He keeps playing with his watch. And she's got something big in the bag. It might be his birthday soon. <laughs> Nice! Could be completely wrong though. Makes you want to know more, doesn't it? Yeah, I guess. How was your lunch? Yeah, it was good. Yeah, it's a good place, isn't it? Yeah, it's nice. Peaceful, actually. So relaxing, isn't it? Walking on the surf, feet slowly sinking into the sand.
I'm uh, having a really nice time. Do you want a kiss? I'd like that. Seeing you again? I think so.
Hello. Hey, Quinn. It's Joseph. How you been? I'm okay. Have you been up too much? Um, I checked out the music you mentioned. I love jazz. I've never heard of Louis Armstrong. I'm glad you mentioned him. He's good. That'd be really nice. Wonderful. Well, we've already been to somewhere charming. How would you like to go to somewhere that appeals to your intellectual side? Actually, I think it'd be really nice to see where you live. Um, yeah, yeah I, I, I guess I'm a bit traditional. Uh, normally I just wait till the Why? Day. Is there something you don't want me to see? Uh, what? Um, nothing. I didn't know that wasn't normal. Um, I won't be judgmental or anything. I just think it'd be really interesting to see where you live. Uh, right. I thought you meant something else. Uh, look, never mind. Uh, That's okay. Maybe after we can go and see a museum. I hear there's a railway museum in Bassadine. That's something I'd be interested in. There's not much to see. Oh, well, if you say so. So, tomorrow's good for you? Yeah. Great. I'll see you tomorrow. No, no, right on time, come in. So, uh, is it how you imagined? Somewhat. Now you arrived just about perfectly on time. I have uh, baked cookies. That's nice of you. Did I tell you I cooked? Uh, you might have mentioned it. Yeah, well, I, I used to cook a lot for my ex. These are particularly hard to bake. Anyone can do that. How about yourself? Do you cook? Sometimes. I'm not very good though. My parents did most of the cooking back home. What kind Where of... Where are you? Sorry. Oh. Come on. What kind of things do you like to cook? Oh, anything really. I'm always trying new things. Uh, so where are your parents? Uh, do you still keep in contact with them? Mm, occasionally. We don't really have much to talk about. They retired to Townsville a few years ago. Hmm. That's a shame. Uh, I think it's important to keep in touch with people from your past, especially family. Uh, my parents are past. Left me this house. No way I could afford it otherwise. But I uh, just think it's uh, important that you should keep that bond strong with your family. Maybe. We just weren't really that close. I don't think they got me. That's a shame. I don't blame them. Anyway, that's not important. Why don't you tell me about some of this stuff? Yeah, sure. All right. Um, let's start the grand tour, shall we? So... Ah. Here I have my Diploma of Fine Arts, which is worth absolutely nothing. But it does look pretty and makes people think I'm fancy. Uh, here I've got some uh, sculptures I did back in high school. They don't impress anyone. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks. I've got some photos here of some people that uh, are quite special to me. Uh, oh, this one here, this man here. He's very special. Uh, very big influence in my life. 
Now you should listen carefully because this is something you need to know about me. Mm. Good cooking. In just a second. Mm. <laughs> Did you really? Uh, yeah. <laughs> and then I sold it to some guy for 50 bucks. So now she's hanging forever, immortalized in some guy's house with this glorious <laughs> handlebar mustache. <laughs> it's just ridiculous. Uh, anyway, that was, that was worth her not paying me. Screw her. Um, Joseph. Mm. Why did you put so much effort into a career that's so hard to get by with? What do you mean? In portraits. You hardly earn any money from them. And you've had to take up all these other jobs just to support it. It seems like too much effort. Because I love it, of course. Don't you have anything you love to do that you'll uh, make sacrifices for? Yeah, I guess. What do you love about painting that you can't get from a photograph? I don't know, I mean... There's certain feelings you can get from a, a painting you can't get from a straightforward depiction of them. So you embellish just here and there to capture that emotive feel. So, like Impressionism? Yeah, exactly. But, surely, if you want to capture someone, then showing them exactly how they are in detail is the best way. Uh, no. I mean, yeah, that's one way of looking at it, but for me, at least, you need something more than that. You can look at a detailed photograph and see every pore, every muscle in their iris, every hair on their face, but that doesn't show you what's going on inside. Those kind of details do have their own beauty, of course, but I don't know, it's like music. You get a strong feeling when you hear music, but what does this, a C flat or a, or a D minor sharp have to do with the, those feelings? They're just vibrations in the air at varying frequencies. Yet, you can express your, your thoughts and your, your feelings a lot better using music than, say, a brain scan. I don't know, that's, that's, that's what I think, and that's why every time I paint someone, I'll sit them down and I'll talk to them and get that real emotive feel before I start to paint. Otherwise, the details, they're just, it's just information, and it? Doesn't really show you what's going on inside, so... I don't know, I'm just talking nonsense, aren't I? Anyway, I gotta go use the little boy's room, if you don't mind. Uh, waiting here for a minute? No. If you get bored, uh, I've got some paints and some brushes over there. Maybe you can get started on a portrait and do a picture of this uh, handsome mug. Why don't we put on some music and dance? You can paint, dance and cook. Well, who said I could dance? I, I said we should, not that I could. Um, well, I don't really dance either. <sighs> who cares? I want to dance with you. It's not that I don't want to, but I've just never danced before. I'm a little bit uncomfortable. Oh, uh, but that's all right. Uh, why don't you come over here and have a look at the records? And I'm sure there's something here that you can feel in sync with.
I do not understand this thing at all. So I gotta get them in the hole. Would I wed what would <laughs> would you wed what Edward would 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 wed? It would I wed what would 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 would? Yeah, yeah. That's it, right? Yeah. Nailed it. <laughs> The difference isn't strictly the size of the sensor, but the size of the photo size. So, uh, the less resolution the better? Wow. Less resolution means less detail. But at night, if you're boosting the ISO too high, you won't get as sharp a picture anyway. So a lower resolution camera means that you'll have larger photo sites for the size of the sensor, and you won't lose as much detail from boosting the ISO. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I think I've got it. Hey, uh... Why don't you join a photography class? You're obviously really passionate about it. So? I just think it's a good idea for you to meet some new people. I don't really feel the need. Well, isn't that what you said when uh, you first met me? I said, I don't know. Most people are too hard to connect with anyway. Yeah, but what if we broke up? Are you... Oh, no, that's not what I meant. I'm just saying hypothetically. I have zero intention of breaking up with you, Gwen. I just think, you know, I shouldn't be the only thing in your life. You're not. I always find some way to fill my time. How do you think I got by before we met? <sighs> not that I have any intention of breaking up with you either. It's been nice getting to know you. Well, okay. But think about it, all right? I think you might actually enjoy it. You just gotta put yourself out there. There's not much to put out there. Gwen, you know that's not true. When I first met you, I could see there was more to you than met the eye. And sure, at first you didn't have a whole lot to say, but as things went on, we saw how much we had in common, uh, your own little interests and quirks. There's a whole lot of people out there, Gwen. Some not so easy to get on with. Some are. But that doesn't mean you just give up. My personal philosophy is to never stop trying new things. That's how I met you. I had a gut feeling and I just went with it. And thanks for that, but I think I just got lucky with you. I guess we just have enough in common that we both like each other, but... You're not the only time I've tried to make friends. You're just one of the first times it's worked. Most people are just... more interesting than me. 
they asked me about myself and I don't know what to tell them. I look inside myself and there's just nothing there. Interesting collection you've got here. How did you get in here? Well, you didn't lock your door this morning. Lucky I noticed it could have been someone not so nice. You know, a burglar or worse, the police. Leave my apartment, please. Now, I always knew you were a bit of a freak, but I never realised you were this fucked up. What is all this shit, Gwen? Kennedy, please. Nah. I want to know what the deal is with all this stuff. It's just something I do. I never hurt anyone. I'm gonna say, the detail here is impressive. You're breaking and entering. I'll call the police. <laughs> you call the police? I should be the one doing that. Do you have any idea how illegal this stuff is? Well, I can only assume so, otherwise you wouldn't have gotten away with it. Looks like you've done a bit of breaking in and entering yourself. Is it for the thrill? Kennedy, please. Oh, come on now, Gwen. How long have we been neighbours for, hey? Now, I don't care if you're a little bit of a creep. Jeez, you're trembling. Sit down, will you? Okay, look. I could go to the police right now and get you into more trouble than you can handle, or... I could do the neighbourly thing and let you off the hook. Thing is though, I've known you for nearly two years and you haven't done shit for me. Now that I know you've got some experience in um, surveillance, it may be something you can do. And if you help me out, maybe I could forget this whole thing ever happened. Sound good? Gwen. Yeah, sounds good. All right, here's the deal. Me and Marco have been together since not long after I moved into this shithole. We were saving up to buy a proper house. Only two months ago he was laid off. Now, it's just been me working 25 hours a week earning shit all. Now he says he's been looking for a new job. Personally, I don't think he's doing anything at all. Because every time I see him at home, he's always watching the fucking footy or playing those fucking video games. Then, He's going out all the time, and what's worse, he's taking money out of my wallet. He denies it, but that much money just ain't fucking disappearing. I need to know what he's spending all this money on. I have a feeling he might be gambling again. So I need you to tail him this weekend. I want photos, find out what he's doing, and don't let him see you. Kennedy, I don't... It's just one little favour, Gwen. Don't act like this is going to be anything difficult for you. You do this sort of thing all the time, don't you? Oh, and uh, keep in mind, I'm not obligated to keep this under wraps. I could have the police here in five minutes. Okay. I'll do it. Let's get going. All right, let's uh, start off with Stalker, and then uh, Holiday Inn. Sounds good. Just so you know, I won't be available this Sunday night. Oh, me neither. That's okay. Again? Yeah, I'm never available Sunday night. Didn't I tell you? Why not? What's on Sundays? You used to be available Sundays. Well, that's my business now, isn't it? Yeah, but... You usually share most of what's going on in your life with me. I guess, but not everything. You, is everything okay? Of course. You're not, like, going to see a doctor? No, of course not, Gwen. Then what is it? 
it's just my business, okay? Why don't you want to talk about it? It's not that I don't want to talk about it, it's just that I shouldn't have to. Everyone deserves the right to... to... Look, I don't ask you about every little detail of your life, okay? All I'm asking is the same courtesy. Just forget about it, alright? Let's just... Let's just relax and watch the movie. Look, I'm, I'm sorry to get like that. Let's just forget it. Look, come here. Let's just watch a movie, okay? Yeah, sorry about that. That's okay. I could just lay like this forever. You forgot to put the movie in. Oh, sorry. Freddy's never gonna fuck me. Come on, Sue's like. He's a whiny little shit. Uh, I was forgetting about it. Jesus, my hope. It's not me who can't get over this. Anyway, what about Kennedy? Is he giving me shit? It's, it's Kennedy, she's always giving me shit. Yes. Yeah. I don't even, I don't even fuck him.
Oi, who's this little pervert? What do you think you're doing peeking through the bedroom window, Missy? Is it a good show? It's fifty dollars. Don't say anything to anyone and it's yours. Deal. And this is just between you and me though? Like you said, I'm a pervert. You don't think I'm the only one here, do you? Are you alright, Gwen? Something on your mind? Do you ever... Do you ever wonder if you really know the people you know? Oh, this isn't about... No, it's nothing to do with you or anything. Just... Something happened recently to someone. One of my neighbours. Mm, what happened? It was just... Her partner. They've been together for years, and she found out he was doing all this stuff behind her back. Unpleasant stuff. Well, that sucks. Just got to me, you know. Like, you think everything's the way you think it is, and it can turn out to be completely different. And then you lose everything you thought was true, just like that. Everyone has secrets, Gwen. Don't think you can ever avoid that. I know, and I agree with you that it's okay to keep some stuff to yourself, but how can you ever know it's not a bad secret? Well, what's a bad secret? Doesn't it all depend on who you're talking to? I mean, different people feel different about different things. I mean, maybe he did something that she didn't like. Um, ultimately, it's all a matter of perspective. It's definitely bad stuff. Well, I'll take your word for it. But it's the little stuff too. Sometimes I just don't understand how people think. Nobody ever wants to tell you how they think, so you can never really know them. You can only know things about them. Well, I guess nobody really knows anybody when it comes down to it. This friend once, in high school. Her name was Julia. That's a nice name. One day she told me she didn't want to hang out anymore. How come? She wouldn't say. She never fought with me or seemed angry. Mostly she seemed happy. That's what got to me. I thought I knew her. I love you. I love you too. Go 
and I, I wouldn't worry about it. These things happen. Not everything is like you and Julia or, or your neighbor. I guess to me, really knowing somebody isn't just about knowing things about them. It's about being able to have a great conversation. It's about being able to sit comfortably in silence. It's, it's getting their favorite bloody song stuck in your head. If I could say anybody knows anybody, would it be like that? Like you and me? Gee, <laughs> teacher, should it be any more sappy? Maybe knowing each other's when you sew yourselves together like a joint twin and bury yourselves alive so you can be together forever. Um, yeah, we're not gonna do that. <laughs> get called in for another shift? Something important. <laughs> Gwen, why have you been ignoring me? Sorry, Candia. What kind of sick game are you playing, you fucking liar? I didn't lie. Yes, you fucking did! Marco is not a cheater. You were just lying to me for finding out your little secret. I didn't lie. He wouldn't do that to me! All those things you said about him. Where's your proof, huh? Couldn't get any fucking photos. Do you just want to fuck up our relationship? Would you be quiet? We shouldn't even be talking about this in public. I tried to get photos. I missed my chance. Some guy came up and saw me sneaking around. But everything I told him is true. Word for word. You are a fucking little liar. You probably didn't even follow him, did you? Did you? You go back out there and you show me the truth, not some bullshit story! Look, I don't want to do this anymore. I did it once. I did what you asked. If you can't accept that, then that's your problem. I'm tired of it. I wish it was something else, but it wasn't. Fuck you! Hey. So, you did end up getting the night free? Uh, yeah. How are you? I'm good. You? I'm okay. Where are we going? Actually, tonight... I thought about what you said the other week about keeping secrets and... Um, you're right. I have been meaning to tell you. I always was going to tell you. But you're right. We shouldn't be hiding things from each other. And it's really not that bad, really. I mean, <laughs> well, it depends how you look at it. Joseph, you don't have to. I shouldn't have pried into your business anyway. I trust you. I should have always trusted you. No. You were right. I was eventually going to have to tell you, so it's better I tell you sooner than later. It's okay. I don't mind you having secrets anymore. It doesn't matter, as long as we both accept each other for who we are. Well, that's the thing. I'm not sure whether or not you will accept me. Could you just trust that I will? No. Well, maybe you could just tell me rather than show me. I think it's better if I just show you. This is all sounding very serious. Yeah, well, it's not as bad as I'm making it sound, really. Well, it's just important to me that I show you. Okay.
this was stupid. I told you, it's not going to make me feel any differently about you. Thanks for saying that, Gwen. Alright. Try not to jump to any conclusions, okay? Hey, it's nice to meet you, Gwen. He's 13 months since last Thursday. You can hold him, if you like. I'm okay. I hope it's not too much, Gwen. I just thought it would be a good idea for you to see him for yourself before you decided how you feel. Me and Joseph aren't involved, in case you're thinking that. It was a one-time thing two years ago. We dated for a while, it just back, but not since then. It's just this one time, Red, and I got into a real big fight. Uh, she doesn't... she doesn't know. Oh, Red's my husband. Well, fiance, back then. It was, a, <clears throat> it was a stupid, impulsive thing, and it only happened once. But we ended up with this beautiful boy, Simon. Red knows now. It wasn't the cleanest of situations, but most of that is behind us. I know it's a big thing, Gwen. Simon is a part of my life. I come here every Sunday now, and I imagine as he gets older, I'll want to come and see him more often. I don't expect you to be too involved or anything, but... I'd better go fill up Simon's bottle. Gwen, say something, please. It's fine. Joe, I can handle this. To be honest, it's not like I ever thought about having anything even remotely close to a family. Any kind of attachments at all, but... It feels kind of nice to be a part of something like this. I mean... I love you. Whoever thought I'd say those words to anyone? And you obviously love Simon. There's no part of me that would want to take away either of those things. <laughs> Hi, Joe. Oh. Hey, Red. So you finally brought your girlfriend over? Yeah. I hope I've seen you before. What? Last week. You you were in the car down the road. Good. What were you doing here last week? spying on me? Answer me, Gwen. What the hell is going on? You were spying on me. Was it just this one time?
Why did you do it? I told you. It was just curiosity. I just wanted to study you. I didn't plan the way things ended up being. And you've done this with what? 35 other people? I've studied them, yeah. But you were the first one I even spoke to. More than momentarily. I'm trying. I'm trying to understand. You don't have to understand. You used me. I didn't use you. I meant nearly everything I said. I just didn't tell you about this one thing. And what about all that other stuff, huh? All that other stuff we coincidentally had in common. What about that? That was all bullshit. All written down in your little book before we even met. Do you have any idea how hard it was for me to show you, Simon? I told you it didn't need to be. Yeah, I guess not. You already knew about him. I just... I wanted to know where you went every Sunday. I hadn't followed you in more than a month. I just... I didn't want you keeping that part of your life secret from me. And I didn't! I always was going to tell you. But you didn't let me. You took that from me. And it wasn't even yours to take. But not just that. When I took you to the lake to show you where I went camping as a little boy, you already knew about it. When I showed you my portraits, you'd already seen them. I was showing you some of the most precious things in my life. I was, was letting you in. I was letting you see what was important to me. I thought I was showing you something special. <laughs> but you already fucking knew about it all. I'm going to need some time to think about this, Gwen. It's just... so... Are you coming to bed, Joe? It's pretty late. In a minute. Did you want to talk about? No. I just need some time alone.
Hey. I'm sorry about all that stuff before. Do you think... Maybe now you've had a chance to think about it. There's any way. Gwen... You're a sweet girl. There's a lot I really like about you. But... I just don't think we can go on after this. I'm not doing that stuff anymore. If that's true, I'm, I'm happy for you. And I know your intentions may have not been so bad, but I just don't think I can go on like you never did all that. It's just not something I can do. Wait here. You can have this back. I don't want it. Actually, I will take it. Thank you for asking me out. I think you could be a great father. Thanks. Join a club. Bye, Joseph. Bye, Gwen. Thought I'd try something a bit different. No? No. You don't like it? You don't like it? No. <laughs> I suppose I could try grow it back. Good plan. So, did you get a certificate? Sure did. I'm now fully qualified to push wheelchairs and help old ladies change. Well, I'm sorry I missed the ceremony. Oh, you mean the one I held for myself while I was waiting for them to print out my certificate? But I got you a little something to make it feel more officious. <laughs> what? It's a graduation hat! Thingy. <laughs> Wait. Huh? Yeah. I feel like I'm in Oxford. Look like it. <laughs> we need to get a photo? picture of this. Come on. <laughs> Make sure you get the hat. Hey. Right. You know what? I'm, I'm, not, I'm not tall enough. Uh, just reach, stretch. Okay. Yes. I'm going to wear this hat the rest of my life. Yes. It's going to be like my just everyday hat. <laughs>